Welcome to my lecture online. Here's our second example of how to find the phase currents and the line currents in a Y delta three wire three phase circuit. We're given that the voltage between A and B, which is now called the line voltage, is equal to 200 volts with a phase angle of minus 40 degrees, and the load impedance is 40 ohms with a phase angle of positive 30 degrees. That would indicate that it's an inductive load. Remember that in a balanced load, all three impedances must be exactly the same. So how do we do that? Well, let's start out by finding the phase current IAB. And that would then be equal to the voltage VAB divided by the impedance. Now, it turns out that VAB, the voltage between A and B here, is exactly the same as the voltage between A and B here. They have the same phase angle, so this can then be written as V little ab divided by the impedance, which then can be written as 200 with a phase angle of minus 40 degrees divided by 40 with a phase angle of a positive 30 degrees. And then that's easy to calculate. We can then say that the phase current iab is going to be equal to 5 with a phase angle of minus 70 degrees. And that, of course, would be in terms of amps. Now that we have the first phase current, we can easily find the second and the third phase current because they're offset by 120 degrees each. So IBC is going to be equal to a magnitude of 5 amps with a phase angle of minus 190 degrees. And ICA is going to be equal to magnitude of 5 with a phase angle at another minus 120, minus 310 degrees, and that would be in terms of amps. Of course, you can then make that into a positive angle by adding a positive 360, and that gives us a positive 50 degrees, and that would be also in terms of amps. So here are the other two phase currents. Now what about the line current, the current feeding the load from the source? So we know that IA, the line current, is going to be equal to the square root of 3 times the phase current with a phase angle of whatever the phase angle is of the phase current plus 30 degrees. Maybe that's a better way to write it to indicate that we simply add 30 degrees to the existing phase angle of the phase currents. And so to do that, we could say that IA, and maybe I should write it like this in more in general. The line current is equal to the square root of 3 times the phase current with an offset on the phase angle. So now when we go from IA, that is equal to the square root of 3 times uh, I phi, that would be IAB, with a phase angle adjusted by 30 degrees. So to do that, that's equal to the square root of 3 times IAB, which is 5 with a phase angle of the existing IAB had a minus 70 degree phase angle. We add 30 degrees to that. That would be in terms of amps. And so let's work that out. So we have a square root of 3 times 5. That gives us 8.66. So this is 8.66 with a phase angle of minus 40 degrees. And that's in terms of amps and that would be the first line current, IA. Now to find the two other line currents, IB and IC, we just realized that it's the same magnitude but with phase angle difference of 120 degrees. So we can say that IB, therefore, is equal to the same magnitude, 8.66, but with phase angle minus 120 added to minus 40 or minus 160 degrees. That's in terms of amps. And IC is equal to 8.66 with a phase angle at another 120, that, or minus 120, that's minus 280 degrees. And of course, we can say that we can write that with a positive angle, that's equal to 8.66 with a phase angle at 360, that would be a positive 80 degrees, and that's in terms of amps. And so there you have it. That's how you find the phase currents and the line currents. Just remember, whenever you shift from a phase to a line, either voltage or current, you have to add or subtract 30 degrees, and you have to multiply or divide by the square root of the 3. 
In the next video, we will summarize that relationship between the line and the phase currents and the line and the phase voltages to make it easier from now on to calculate the various aspects you're looking for. And that's how it's done.